Hey everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Fucking Easy Food Prep, healthy food you actually wanna eat. So I don't have my trusty assistant here today because I wasn't prepared yesterday and I didn't have all the ingredients to make what we were making today, so I'm flying solo. Now Craig was gonna come down too, but he's busy doing other stuff, this other stuff, so you've just got me today. So the oat slice that I made last week turned out so awesome that I decided to try a, another variation of it. So this one is a cherry and coconut one. And instead of using maple syrup, I'm gonna try using condensed milk, which I think will turn out awesome. So I've just got 375 grams of oats here, which I've soaked overnight in two cups of skim milk, or you can use light milk, or you can use full fat. Um, but I'm trying to keep the fat down so I can use fat in other areas. So that's just soaked overnight. And what that does is just reduces the digestive inhibitors and makes it much easier for your body to digest. And I found with the other one that I made, it was awesome. I didn't get bloated, um, gassy or anything. It was actually really, really good. So I've got a can of the Woolworths tin cherries. Um, we've got a can of coconut, coconut, condensed milk, just the skim milk. I had some sultanas that I wanted to use up, so there's 100 grams of sultanas there. We've got 50 grams of desiccated coconut, 65 grams of coconut oil, two mashed bananas, if you can see them. And then we've got two eggs, and we're gonna put in some ginger and cinnamon. So basically, all you need to do is throw all of this shit into this bowl here. Oh, actually, I got this new spatula from Nikki that I need to use, let me have a look. How exciting, so we can scrape everything out of the bowl. Um, and basically throw it all in, and then we're just gonna put it into a, just any sort of container, really, oven, oven proof container, and just line it with um, grease proof paper. So I'm gonna put probably about a teaspoon, so this is half a teaspoon, so we'll put a teaspoon of each of the ground ginger and the cinnamon. Oh. It's not going to bloody fit, which is, let me get the quarter teaspoon out, which is going to be annoying. So I'll put four, one, two, three, four. So a teaspoon each of those. And then you're just going to chuck all the other, other stuff in. So usually we talk about various different topics on um, fucking easy food prep. And something that I've noticed has, you know, come up a lot this week. And you know, I, I see it because I see it in Slack and I see you know, Mel and, and the coaches messaging women um, and it's excuses. And it's women making excuses as to why they can't get to where they wanna be. Um, and, and it's interesting because you know, we have so many different women come into our program and I actually just did a, an interview with one of them, um, Sean, and she's lost 10 kilos in 12 weeks eating over 2,000 calories a day, training three days a week. Um, and she was someone who was a, a bit of a big boozer, like I once was. And she just said to me, you know, Kitty, I used to use alcohol as a crutch, probably like, I mean, I used to like to drink too, it's fun. Like, who doesn't like getting shit-faced? Um, but, you know, she had to learn that that wasn't actually gonna fix her problem and it wasn't going to help her. Um, and she decided that she was gonna commit to no drinking for 12 weeks. And it is just incredible the results that she um, has got. But you know, it's funny, I hear it from women all the time. Oh, it's too hard, Kitty, I'm too busy. You know, I can't not drink when I go out on the weekends. But you have to ask yourself, it's like short-term gain, short-term pain for, well, not even really pain, for longer-term gain. It's, it's sort of delaying instant gratification because you know, next time you want to go and have, and I used to be the same, next time you want to go and have that drink, ask yourself, is this actually going to fix my problem? Am I going to feel better tomorrow? And is this the choice that is going to get me to where I want to be? And if you actually answer those questions, you'll find that it is no. And the first time you do it, it'll be hard, the second time it'll be hard, but as time goes on, it gets easier and easier. And you'll wake up the next day and you'll feel better and you'll see your body changing. Um, and you know, like I think, there's nothing worse than, you know, looking back, like continuing on the path that you're on and then looking back in 12 months time, you're still fat, you're still miserable, you're still not sleeping through the night, you're still constipated, you're still bloated and wishing and thinking that I, I would have done that. And you know, 
you don't have to be perfect because imperfect action is better than no action. And just sitting there and thinking about it and beating yourself up about all the stupid things that you've done, you know, because I think it's funny, like, I, I am not a huge thinker. It's not that I don't think at all, um, but I'd much rather do and fail and pick myself up and, and learn that way because I think imperfect action consistently will get you to your goal much quicker than sitting there and thinking, oh, I can't do this, or you know, I'm gonna continue to beat myself up about all the silly things that I've done, you know? And I talk pretty openly about this, like I'm okay with being vulnerable and you know, I'm okay with who I am, but I was a slut when I was younger. Like, I was one of those stupid women that would pine after guys that would go and have sex with them and then they just use me and I'd keep coming back and again and again and again. Um, and I only ever ha have had two relationship relationships in my life. One was my ex-husband and the, the, the other one is Craig. Um, so, you know, I was pretty, pretty, pretty bad. But I guess I just got to the point where I was like, I don't wanna be that person anymore, you know? What is it that I'm doing that's stopping me from actually meeting someone that loves me, that doesn't just wanna have sex with me and, and get rid of me? So, you know, I, I, I didn't beat myself up about what I was doing, I moved forward and I looked at who I wanted to be and what I had to do to get there. And the funny thing is, is not long after I decided that, I met Craig. So it is, I think, where you focus your energy is where your energy will go. So if you're consistently focusing on all the dumb shit that you've done, I'm just gonna grab some baking soda because I forgot about the baking soda. So you wanna put a teaspoon of this in as well. If you consistently focus behind you and about your past and all the shit that you've done, and I'm not saying you don't need to process things and have feelings and cry, like I cry. I cry, but then I move forward. I don't look backwards, I look forward and I focus on where I wanna go instead of where, where I've actually, so just put a big heat teaspoon of that in, um, in, instead of on all the mistakes that, that I've made. And I think when you do that, it, it, you, it's amazing when you shift your energy there, how quickly things can change. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're sitting there and you find yourself you know, beating yourself up about all the dumb shit you've done and not moving forward and making excuses, you know, um, at some point you've just got to get your fucking shit together. <laughs> like, you can't make excuses anymore. You can't blame someone else for you not being where you want to be. Um, and, and when you do that, it's, it's actually, it's, it's super empowering and you'll attract good things into your life and you'll attract good people into your life. So. Okay, this is looking really, really awesome. Um, I don't know if I said, but preheat the oven to 180 degrees. So we're just gonna pour that into the uh, into my little pre-prepared tin here. Um, look, Nikki, I've got my spatula, how exciting. We'll use that. All right, here we go. Geez, I hope it fits in here. It's pretty, um, it's pretty big. I don't know, I think it'll be good. No, I think this is gonna be amazing. Oh look, the red spatula matches the, uh, matches the bowl. So put all that in, just push it out evenly. Oh, this is great. Look at all the extra mixture that I'm getting off here with my new spatula. There we go. No, oh, that's good. So last time we put this in the oven for an hour at 180 degrees and that seemed to do it uh, perfectly. So I put the banana in, oh yeah. Uh, 180 degrees and then just pop it out, let it cool, slice it, pop it into my fitness pal. This is probably gonna do me 12 slices. Oh, actually, the one thing I forgot to add is the uh, gelatin. Last time I added some gelatin in here as well, but that's all right. I'll have that after. So pop that in the oven. Put it on for an hour and then you're done. Super easy baked oatmeal slice. And if you make any excuses, just fucking do it. Just get on with it and stop making excuses because I promise you, you won't regret it. Enjoy.